four, three, two, one. Hello, everybody. All right, all right. We are live. We're on the line with uh, Oscar Wherever Capel I am. today <laughs> with Capel and Associates. And we're still in Financial Empowerment Week. Uh, with Phoenix National Business Group Productions. If you would like to know more about Phoenix National Business Group, we are a group of entrepreneurs that uh, made a commitment to you to bring you information that's going to help you upgrade your life and your business. Because when you win, we win. We win. Uh, so uh, we love. We just love that you have joined us today with Oscar Capel and uh, he's going to talk to us about a few of the services that are relevant to your business and to you. So please uh, share with your friends, share with your loved ones, because this information is vital and you really would like to make sure that they have this information. Uh, it, uh, again, I'm going to give you some time like and share with uh, your friends and loved ones so that they can be informed on how they can stay protected through uh, the services that Oscar Capel with Capel and Associates offers, okay? Uh, his information, of course, is at the bottom of the screen. You can visit his website or you can email him directly. Also, we have a awesome sponsor, Tom Estes, who is with Allstate. And uh, again, his information will be popping up throughout the program. So please support our sponsors so we can continue to bring you uh, these informative, powerful uh, speakers and presenters uh, in, in, in the specialty in their field. Uh, also, uh, coming up right after this is going to be Karen Mayo with Root of Leadership, the Roots of Leadership. And, you know, if the roots are bad, the tree is going to be bad. So uh, we have to uh, make sure we cultivate our roots. And uh, Karen Mayo is going to come on board and she's going to walk us through uh, leading uh, from the heart. So you don't want to miss that. Uh, and you really would like to make sure that you catch the rest of the programs we're going to have running for the day. Uh, following that is going to be uh, Frank Coppola, and he's going to talk about uh, uh, procrastination, overcoming procrastination. Now, you know, and I know that you know that you procrastinate, and so <laughs> you want to make sure you come and catch that program uh, he has a book on overcoming procrastination as well, which I believe he'll be giving one away for F-R-E-E. -E. What does that spell, Oscar? Fry. Fry. Oh, yes. <laughs> free. Yes, that's right. It is F-R-E-E -E free. So you don't want to miss that. It is going to be awesome. And so you really want to catch it. Catch it. Catch it. All right. Again. I'm going to give you five more seconds to share with your friends and loved ones because Oscar Capel is coming on and he is going to share some of the deep secrets of staying protected in this digital age. And uh, again, we all want to make sure that we do that. Um, so without further ado, Oscar. Good you, morning, Phil. First of all, Good before... Morning. Before we talk about me, I want to really acknowledge what you've been doing lately. Um, I only know you for two weeks. I feel like I've known you forever. Um, so true, right? I don't <laughs> think I've missed any of your shows. And I have purchased pretty wow. much every book from everybody that has been on the show because oh. it is – and. and um, the roots, the roots book is on its way. It's Amazon, so it's going to take a couple of days. I was hoping it would be here before the show today, but obviously Prime isn't working as well during COVID. So I was expecting <laughs> yeah, the I helicopter know, to know. drop it off on the porch immediately, but that's not happening. So I'm just going to have to take notes today. Until, I'm with Lysol. 
<laughs> yes, I don't, we don't want to use that. That's not. Um, we will. Uh, so, you know, I'll be listening intently to her today until the book comes in. But yeah, and again, I, I, you know, I want to thank you for putting this program together. It's been amazing. And I find out I got a lot more to learn. Yeah, and got to yeah, make sure I talk to my man. accountant, get all that straightened out. <laughs> uh, uh, me too. <laughs> and, yeah, and, exactly. And waiting later on for Frank for the procrastination. Yes. And I did start an anti-procrastination group about two years ago. Really? Yeah, we haven't met yet. <laughs> So I figure I got I got to I got to talk to Frank. <laughs> All right, so let All me. Right. Ahead, I, I roll my sleeves up because this, you know. Um, did you tell your audience to have two pairs of socks on today? Uh, no, one is one should be one should do All for right. today. So I, I might it's, blow one pair of one socks off. Tomorrow. It's too hot. All right, I might blow one pair of socks off with the presentation today. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I might under impress. All right, so let me let me share the screen, get up to the the PowerPoint. And if technology works well, then we shall. Here it is. Ta da. I think you have to go up a little more. Yeah, slideshow from current slide. Here we here. All right. Can you guys see this? Yep. Yep. We're good. And th I think this is the word that we've been looking at since March the stress level in the country and the world has gone up incredibly high. Um, what can we do to reduce stress? That is probably the, the topic I want to hit today. And part of financial empowerment is making sure everything is in line. So, and, and as, um, as our accountant talked about, make sure you have that in place, make sure you have all of that in place. And Ramona talked about having your, insurance and your and all the other financial things already in place so we're going to talk about stress um real quick what i do i'm pretty much the best way to describe me is a professional problem solver i have access to services that help individuals families and businesses sleep better at night without worrying about when and how a their ident their stolen identity is going to be used and how to afford a reliable lawyer and law firm. And we do that by using a disruptive business model that everybody's familiar with. And we'll be going over that in a little while. So in the stress part, this is what stress can do to us. It is, it is the number one debilitator in this country right now. One of the things, and this, is, this slide is actually from um, one of my presentations for small businesses. And what we want to do is protect the business by protecting the employees. And we can do that through a, a um, payroll deduction system. So one of the slides is, are employees' legal woes costing your business a fortune? Because if there's, there's an employee with a problem, their head, is not in, their head is not into work. And they're trying to figure out how to get all these moving parts nice and, and, uh, and stable and you can't think about work. Not only that, but you might miss days of work if there's a legal problem or an identity theft problem. So that is one of the things we cover. The problem with the legal profession, normally it's been expensive, unresponsive, and unaccountable. If you don't like what your lawyer is doing or how he's handling your case, you have no one to go to. There's no, there's no, who do you complain to? So the other thing is the cost. Lawyers are expensive and they do a lot of work and they, they should get paid for what they do. But we're looking at it as an outdated business model, especially since we have, uh, well, let me go, let me, let me talk about this first. This is how I use my law firm, New York. Our law firm is Feldman Kramer in Monaco. I had a problem with um, Toyota. They fixed the car and two years later, the part went bad. And when I went to get, when I went to get it replaced, they asked me to pay $497 for it. Normally that would be the end of the case, but since I have access to a law firm, I have, I gave them a call. They told me, yes, you know, this is something that they, that they do routinely. They sent what I call a motivational letter to Toyota and the same manager that told me there's a door, don't let it hit you on the way out, decided that um, it was better to just give me my money back and, and get that over with. 
So yeah, five hundred dollars back for four hundred and ninety seven dollar repair. I think I I lucked out on that one. So the other thing we're talking about stress right now during COVID, you're seeing a lot of people that are being infected with COVID and they don't have a will. And what I tell people is talking about sex won't make you pregnant and getting your will done won't make you die any quicker, but it will prepare you for the eventuality. So a lot of people want to know, how can I get these documents prepared affordably? Who do I see? Who do I talk to? Where do I have to go? How much is it going to cost? And we've taken all of those out of the equation. Other thing is, what happens if you die without a will? Where does your stuff go? Depending on the state, you'd have to go into probate. It's going to be a long and, and arduous task to get the money and the items that you think whoever should get um, would get because probate, they really don't care. And the government just tells you where everything is going to go. 44% of Americans have a will. That means a lot of us don't. And that is not a good, that is not a good piece, uh, place to be in. Um, there are different places that you can go to get wills done. And one of them says any information you submit to the site might not be protected by attorney client privilege. This is on their site. So one of the things we'd like to do is make sure people get their will done and get it done legally because every state has a different, um, has a different way of doing wills. And if you get your will done in New York and you move to Florida and something happens and, and you pass away in Florida, your will might not be a, a valid will in that state. So here's my will, living will, healthcare power of attorney. All of these were done for me through Legal Shield, which is one of the companies I'm working with. And that was done under our $24.95 a month subscription fee. This is the law firm that we use in New York, like I said. And if you have a legal plan, you hit that little blue button up on top right. If you don't, then you call these guys and pay full price for everything. And again, I said they're expensive, unresponsive, and unaccountable normally. But what we've done is through this disruptive innovation, we've made it affordable, accountable, and responsive. That is our app. And we'll be going through what each of those buttons do. Disruptive innovation, like I said, everybody knows about it because we're used to using Uber to get a taxi, not flagging down taxis in the street anymore. And the best way to compare it is Netflix blockbuster to what we do. Imagine your regular lawyer is $200 an hour. Now you're going to speak to that lawyer for an hour. You're going to get charged $200. You're going to hang up. If you had a follow-up question, you call up for another half hour. You're going to be charged again for another half hour. Netflix said, hey, these movies are good, but why can't people just pay one monthly fee and then watch the movie as often as they want? Same movie, same quality, same director, except now you're using that group buying power of the insurance model of paying a little bit up front and then using it as much as you want. So that is turning legal services around. Here's another stress. Anybody get this kind of stress? You see that the red light or blue light, depending on what your state you're in, coming up behind you, that causes a bunch of stress. So if you get a traffic ticket with our app, you just tap that app, take a picture of the ticket, submit it to your law firm, and your law firm will call you back and let you know how to fight the ticket. If you're out of state, you can call the law firm and say, I would like to be represented in court, and that's a $25 copay. And if you get, if you're a New Yorker or, or New Jersey, like Phil, and we're driving down South, you know, that's, that's an easy ticket because we're going two miles over the speed limit. They know you're not coming back in two months for the court date. So this is a way that you can, you can fight the tickets. And the other, the other thing about tickets that people don't realize, if you get points on your license, you're paying for that ticket through your insurance for the rest of your life. So having a lawyer, at least get those those points off your off your ticket is a saving in itself. Here's a button no one else has. I call this my Oprah button because I know Oprah has the ability to call her lawyer at two o'clock in the morning if something happens. But the rest of us do not have that option unless you have this app on your phone. So we have 24 hour legal access to the law firm 
for any kind of emergency after hours. That in itself is wonderful. This is, this is what the app looks like. The next form of stress is identity theft. And identity theft, people believe, A, that it's only your finance. If you watch commercials, you're going to see commercials for everything that watches your bank account, your mortgage, your whatever financial statement. And that is only financial. There are many, many types of identity theft and that include medical, driver's license, social security. Um, they can hijack your phone and they can hijack your social media. And right now we know we live on both of those, phone and social media. So if you think this is what identity theft look like, <clears throat> then that's what your best looking phone looked like when that was identity theft. But now it's completely different. We're looking at hacks that are taking millions of records at a time and billions of records now. The Equifax data breach at the time was 147 million and everyone's head exploded because that's half the country right there. 325 million people living here and 147 million people hacked. Unfortunately, it got worse because last year, one breach itself was 1.2 billion. And I think the total number of, of records taken in breaches in 2019 hit 15 billion. So when you say, I don't think they're going to take my identity, your identity has already been taken. It's been copied and it's been sold and it will hit the market soon. And what I'd like to do is make sure that there is a service that is not only monitoring your identity 24 hours a day, but also the ability to restore your identity back to pre-theft status. So whatever monitoring service you have right now, I urge you to pick up the phone, call them up and say, do you have a licensed private investigator that with a limited power of attorney can do the restorative work for me? If they say no, please hang up politely and give me a call and we get that fixed. Like I said, it's more than financial. We're looking at passport, social security, all of these different types of identity that is not stolen. In, in my big workshop, I, I make the distinction between stealing and copying. Your identity is not being stolen. It's being copied and it's being used without your permission. So when you find out about it, it's pretty much too late. And now you have to prove yourself innocent. The problem with identity theft is it's the only crime that you have to prove yourself innocent. innocent. Um, a book I read that I use a lot in my presentation is If You Are Me, Then Who Am I? And these are a, a lot of stories of worst case scenarios. Um, a woman in there was arrested 22 times for a crime she didn't commit. And she actually has a letter from the state's attorney general saying, this is not the person you are looking for. That's how bad it gets. When we had the original Equifax breach, somebody said victims will be looking over their shoulders in constant fear for the rest of their lives. And again, think that was when that was only 145 million people affected by that breach. Now we're looking at 15 billion records. So it's gotten a lot worse. Um, <clears throat> poor Gerber Guzman was arrested twice for a crime he didn't commit because unlike TV shows where they solve everything in a half hour, there is no way to easily know who you are at any given time in, in police records. They just don't update the records that quickly. Worst thing about identity theft is it does not discriminate. This was the oldest man in the US and he had his social security number taken and they accessed his account, wiped out his account. Luckily, banks are really good at restoring your money after the investigation period. So he got all his money back. This girl, unfortunately, <clears throat> had her identity stolen at three and owes $750,000 right now on when they discovered the, the theft later on. Child identity theft is huge. The market now is going for child for children's identity because no one checks the child's credit score until they're about to apply for college. So the other thing people don't know is the majority of child identity theft is family related. There's someone in the family might have a gambling problem and needs to open a new account. And the niece's new social security number is a great way to do that. So um, all of these 
all of the, the information I have here, I have links to. If you contact me, I can send you those links directly. Another problem is medical identity theft. Like it didn't get bad enough so far. So medical identity theft is the deadliest form of, of identity theft because your records will be merged with whoever stole your identity. And if you have two different blood types and you're in an accident and you need blood transfusion right away, that could be deadly. If they have diabetes, for instance, you, they might want to give you a, a, an insulin shot immediately, which would probably cause a lot of problems, if not, not death. $13,000 out of pocket is what it would cost and the average to fix an identity theft problem that is medically related. The problem is HIPAA laws do not allow you to look at your own medical records if someone else's records are in there. So it's a catch-22. How do you tell the medical bureau, that is not me, that is not me, that is not me, that is me, if you can't look at the records? That's why a licensed private investigator with a limited power of attorney can go in there. They have the authority to go through the records and fix what is broken. But what I like to tell people is you after your car hits a tree, you can't go to the mechanic and say, hey, fix my car and I'm going to get some insurance now to pay for it. You need the insurance up front. And with identity theft, you need like a like when you're updating a computer that says we're going to we're going to do a restore point before we put in the new program in case there's a problem. The investigators need to know who you are right now. And anything that is not you from today forward will be fixed. While they do the search through your records, anything that is not you, they will flag and let you know about, and they will fix that also. But you can't come to them and say, my social security number has been stolen. I, I'm not getting my refund back. Can you fix it? Because that already is a problem that is a pre-existing condition and that will not be covered. This is your medical form that you sign when you go to the doctor. Everything in red, is, is personally identifiable information that when the server gets hacked, they have access to. And what I point out at the bottom, the emergency contact, not only are you putting your information out there, but you're putting another person's information out there that could be stolen. One of the ways this is stolen is every one of these sheets gets, um, it gets photocopied and, and that copying machine is leased and it has a few terabytes of memory, which no one ever deletes. So when that machine is out of the office, it gets put in a warehouse, identity thieves buy it for pennies on the dollar, re remove that terabyte drive and has access to every single medical record that was ever scanned into that machine. So what they said was the worst month in 29, with 2 billion records, like I said, it ended up with 15 billion at the end of the day. Here's another problem. Was your mortgage one of the 900 million recently exposed? I mean, we can go through these day after day, hour after hour, and you're seeing what's going on out there. It's no one is looking for your identity. They are stealing billions of records and using it against you. One of the problems is the other companies that are out there are not doing such a great job of monitoring and restoration, and the government has gotten on them for that. Um, right after the Equifax breach, Morgan Wright was on an interview on CNBC, and they talked about what's going on. And I love the, the reporter says, well, what do you do for your family? And he, the quote is, I use ID Shield because they have actual investigators. And I said, you know, talk about an endorsement. You got the probably the most paranoid person in the US saying, I have, a, I have a system in place that looks after my family. So this is what it looks like on the app. We protect individuals, families, and businesses with these, with these two apps. What's your next step? Get a hold of me, call me. I will send you the free app and a video on what exactly that it is we cover and how we do it. And we can get your family protected for less than a, less than $2 a day. Um, and that's not even talking about our, um, our member perks, which gets you money back on things you already buy. So I literally do not pay for my service because 
the savings I'm getting from my phone alone covers the cost of my uh, my subscription. So it's a win-win, like Phil likes to say, likes to say, when you win, we win. And that is the service that I provide. That's one of the services that I provide. So your next step is to reach out and say, hey, I want to protect my family. I want to protect my business. I want to protect my employees. So everything works without that stress that we saw at the beginning of, of the slides. Thanks so much for your attention. I hope that was helpful. Any questions, I am here. And I'm on the show with Phil as often as possible because I love learning from, from his guests also. You are muted. You're as bad as I am. I'm mute. Thank you, Oscar. That You're was welcome. that was amazing. Um, listen, I, I want to ask you quickly about the the young child, the, the child that was three years old. Right. How does somebody get access to a three years three year old's information? How does someone get access to a newborn's information? The hackers yeah. out here. Here's the and, and you know if I go through the whole you know our presentation, I go deep into each one of these problems. They're they're social security numbers are not random numbers. There is a certain way that those numbers are are done. You so right. the hackers have found out that they can predict what social security numbers will be coming up. So they have an alert set up on whatever their system is. And when one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine gets assigned to a newborn, they get a ping and they can start using that social security number immediately. Wow. Yeah. They get alerted. They get alerted as to new social security numbers. Yes. So we're, you know, like I said, we're not talking about some kid sitting in his basement, you know, trying to hack into. We're looking at state sponsored terrorism, basically, that pay people 24 hours a day in in centers to just hack at every single entity anywhere in the world. It's not just us. So they're looking they're looking to hack. I think the Pentagon gets 60,000 hack attempts a day. So, you know, we we are not we're we're no longer living in the stone age. We're in the digital age. All our information is out there. All our information has been stolen. It is being sold. It is being resold. Uh, one story was a woman went to get a job somewhere. And when they checked her social security number, says, I'm sorry, you can't get a job here because you're already working in our California store. And she's like, I've never been to California. And then when they did the background check, they found out her social security number was used in four different instances for jobs. So that she just found out by accident because she applied for her a job and this is what happens when you don't have monitoring you find out at the wrong time like guzman found out that his driver's license was used um probably got a traffic ticket never appeared in court so now there's a warrant out because you didn't appear in court it's that easy and you know, poor guzman got arrested twice two different instances because he didn't find out that that was stolen until it was too late well like i like to say be proactive and preventive rather than reactive and panicked because panicked is not a good way to try to fix anything. You look concerned now. I <laughs> am speechless. I am speechless. I mean, if you're watching this program right now and what Oscar uh, just shared doesn't concern you, then check your pulse. <laughs> Because uh, that just means that you no, know, if you have just been on the, you're, the fact that you're on Facebook says that your information is vulnerable. Right. Uh, the fact that you're on YouTube says that your information is vulnerable. You know, uh, the fact that you have a bank account. <laughs> I mean, you shop. You shop at uh, Walmart. <laughs> right. You well, know? here, what I like I to mean, say is, if if you have a pulse, you're vulnerable. And if you don't have a pulse, you're also vulnerable because the other hacking is death certificates. And they start using dead people's identities immediately. I mean, they, we're talking sophistication of, of hackers and, and thieves. And I have not even gotten into scams. 
because when I do my workshop, I do identity theft and elder scam. And now with COVID, the scams have ramped up like crazy. The, the picture behind me is we were interviewed on TV for a cybersecurity panel. Um, I didn't mention I am a certified identity theft risk management specialist. Mm -hmm. And that is after um, I lost my job through a bankruptcy. And living in the gig economy, one of the things that we talk about in, in your financial empowerment is what's your next step? If like 40 million people right now lost their jobs through COVID, what is their next step? What if there's not another restaurant job to go to? Using the gig economy, we are able to start a business from scratch and not even a brick and mortar. You can buy into any type of business that's already up and running, has the system going and just plug into that river and, and ride the current. But you know what I was talking about before is like, we need to be prepared in, in our financials have to be done. Our, our identities have to be prepared. Our ability to produce income needs to be covered so this is a lot that i've that i've learned in your in this past week is how do you protect your income what is the next step and we're going to be doing a uh, um a phil and oscar show on mindset i can't wait for that one mm -hmm. and you know we'll yeah. be discussing stuff like that also yeah absolutely absolutely because you know, if you're geared up with the wrong information, and I love talking on that subject because there's so much wrong information out there. I mean, you can't you can throw a rock and hit something that is like faulty information. And uh, just an advice to everyone that is watching: uh, this is this is about giving you clear, clean, direct contact with information that is viable and confirmable and you you don't you know you can research it all day long it's still going to come out on top because it's just direct information so you you know um so you can be well informed and uh and i and i appreciate oscar being on board because this is vital i mean everybody i i'm just i'm talking straight from the heart here this is vital protect yourself online okay i can't say it i can't say it even much more than that oscar that's just that's as straight as you could go right and, and anybody thinking about doing it and not doing it tune in to frank and get off your butt and stop procrastinating <laughs> so it's a it's a cheap plug. procrastination it's a cheap plug for the next uh the, the next <laughs> guest coming oh, on you but... know they can they can <laughs> Join your uh, your club, <laughs> the procrastination <laughs> club. Well, I'm you know uh, the scary <laughs> thing is I can I can tell you how many people that have come to me and say, oh my god, I found out my my identity stolen. What do I do? Mm -hmm. And my my answer to certain people is call your law firm and call the ID Shield people to make sure mm -hmm. that they handle it because I've talked to you about this about six months ago, and I know you've signed up and you've protected your family. Mm -hmm. And how many times do I get, oh yeah, I, I meant to do it, um, but I forgot. And at that right. point, I'm like, you're basically, you're on your own because you know, you can't, you can't insure a crashed car. Right, 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 because it's done. That's too late to do that. Right. Well, so again, everyone that is watching, uh, we're so glad that you're on the line. I uh, love to give a shout out to our sponsor, Tom Estes with Allstate. Uh, their phone number is 973-376-8914. And uh, they're our sponsor for these programmings. You really want to support our sponsors because that's how we're able to come to you uh, through these venues. And uh, we'll be moving forward to uh, some other venues as well. Uh, so stay tuned, okay, because you might be able to see us on local television soon. All right, uh, we were looking forward to, again, bringing you this information. Uh, if you would like to support our efforts, uh, you can do so as well. So we look forward to everyone uh, watching these programs. Uh, we're going to be coming up again at 12 with Karen Mayo on the roots of leadership. 
So stay tuned. And Oscar. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And I guess we will see you after Karen is done, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, absolutely. Can we get a high five on him? Can we I do thought... a... <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right, everybody. Take care. See you in a 